Okay, I think this is a short video. Not much to go over. So much work. Hello, folks. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only. I am the one they call Hobo Tom. And it's Monday, so you know what that means. Well, first of all, it's the Backlash. It's the Monday Raw after Backlash. So just a quick little news and notes. I kind of, if you watch my recap video, I did managed to watch stuff i caught up in some things and i figured out that i'll tell you what el vagabundo he has the algorithm because he got four out of seven right he got the snooze match right not so much the match of the night i guess you can say he did get the stone cold lock because oscar technically didn't didn't lose hey geez but so therefore, El Vagabundo's in the head of one Stephanie McMahon Levesque. What's wrong? You got your fuzzies today. You can come up here. You, you know, whenever I sit at this desk, you want to jump up there. No, you don't. It's just a watch. It'll be fine. Come on up. <laughs> She's just staring at me. She wants to know what I've been doing all day. Why did I leave her? So I had to work. So I had to work three jobs today. That's amazing. Um, also, what else is amazing? BLM two. He has those good to hear from you. Uh, we were talking about how ever since I think AEW banned me, I got the I got the zonking from AEW a while ago, and since AEW's because actually I did do one AEW show, and then I said, well. Let's see what happens. I try to do a second one. AW said, get out of here. You fat piece of shit. You're fired. Well, you're copyrighted. So they copyright zonked me and I was banned for, yeah, three months. Jeez, that was a long three months too. It felt like a long three months. Felt disproportional to the crime. But whatever. Um, I could cover them when they weren't big, they got big, and they got money to pay copyright people. Whatever. So BL BLM2, you sir, you don't get copyright violated, but you win twice because you get the one, two, three, four, five, six count.
And with all that being said, I was gonna end. Oh, I had to wake up. I had to wake up this morning fairly early. I had to figure out. I have to figure. I had to figure out time zones. How to do math in the morning? I had to figure out. 8 a.m. time zone, or 8 a.m. central is 9 a.m. here, and I somewhat have to remember that for a little bit. So, because that's kind of important for my other job. So that's 9 to 5.30. Tomorrow it's... Yeah, none of my coworkers were happy about this. 7.30 to 4.30. Do get an hour lunch. The problem is... Yeah, 12 o'clock. Central's 1 o'clock. Everything is followed up. That's why you pray for... Three more weeks. And then I'll be rolling in quarters on my bed like Scrooge McDuck. That's enough about this. Let's get to some Monday Night Raw. Um, starts off, there was a little thing between Randy Orton and Christian. It's pretty good. Randy Orton is to say, step up. You can't wrestle. Let's just do this unsanctioned. So, again, it was a really long segment. Um, then we had Kevin Owens taking on Angel Garza. This, this from what I saw, it was a pretty good match. Uh, again, it's hard to say that Angel Garza and Kevin Owens could really put on a bad match. Kevin Owens is so good and so skilled. Let's see here, which way to center myself. So I, so you can still see the door of wrestling. I do need this. This chair is kind of rolling a little bit. It's not, I think, meant for such use. But, again, this was, a again, a fun, exciting match. Kevin Owens is so good. Such a good talk in the ring. Angel Garza is going to hold his own in talking, too. And then, for some reason, I kind of missed a little bit because I had to get, get dinner all set up. Um, Andrade kind of interfered, but Kevin Owens just decided to stunner everyone. And then, whoa, Dominatrix Zelina Vega comes up. Yes, mistress. By your command, mistress. Um, so again, this was a fun match. It was a good solid match. Good opening to Monday Night Raw. It's a cheeseburger match. And then we get into the black hole of Raw where they do no wrestling. It was Bobby Lashley and MVP. They were talking. Uh, Lana comes out, and um, I'll tell you what, Lana's outfits are, are getting weirder and weirder. She did not have on as much makeup. I'll tell you what, her tits were going to flop out, and we were, we were going to see something else to come out. Yep. Uh, I think the crowd started to chant, Jerry, 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 because it's the tease of a Lana and Lashley, Lashley divorce. Gee, this wasn't even... I was saying... Okay, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say it's only been like eight or nine months. So it wasn't even a whole year. And they did the recap between the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. And they have to drop this ninja angle. This is not worth watching wrestling anymore. Especially because it's like Akira Tozawa. Everyone already, Akira Tozawa is so well established. It'd be one thing if, like, who would do a good, <laughs> if Yano was a ninja. Yeah, that's not happening, but I don't even think Yano would do that. Who in New Japan would make a good ninja? Shibata. Shibata would, actually, um, Kenta. No, I forget his NXT name. He would have made a good ninja, now that I think about it. Him and Akira Tozawa? And the big, tall ninja? That was interesting. Um, this, that was a eight man. This was ridiculous. Street Profits and Viking Raiders take on Akira Tozawa and ninjas. There was a few wrestling moves. There was a ninja squash match. It wasn't even fun. Then the big ninja comes in the ring, so the big show comes in the, in the ring. Shows up ringside. I'll tell you what. They're killing the Viking Raiders. <sighs> Hate to say it, folks. This was a piece of toast match.
I just wasn't entertained by it whatsoever. Then we had uh, Seth Rollins do an interview. Then Christian gets interviewed. Then Seth Rollins comes out to the ringside, and then he calls out Ray. Ray, Ray Mysterio altered his mask. I do like the fact that he doesn't have an eye patch, but you can tell there's a little mesh over the eye. His eyes probably fine now. Again, he had to get some of the ketchup out. Get that vinegar found in ketchup price. Things worse than anything else. But with this, I mean, this this was shocking because then Dominic came like out of nowhere. Jumped Seth. Seth sold and Dominic actually looked pretty convincing doing it. Um, the hapless... Play yakety sax because Austin Theory and Murphy couldn't catch little Dominic. He goes into the crowd. Yeah, that was okay. Then there's R Truth hiding underneath the mat and complaining about ninjas. I guess it's one of the practice rings they have at the performance center. He's it is what it was. That took up I think I want to say like till the nine twenty mark. So again, Raw is this black hole for a while. Then this match wasn't much better. It was, it was Liv, Liv Morgan and Italian Nightheart taking on the Iconics. I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for the power and force of the Iconics' lungs, even though I want to know what they sound like in bed, they're, they're still more vocal than actually the rest of the crowd. And... Um, Liv starts up, and Natalia just tags herself in blindly. Uh, for her effort, she gets punched right in the face by Peyton Rice. The Iconics! I just like doing that now. That might that might be... Oh, could the Iconics be placed? Out of gold, baby! I don't know. Out of gold, baby! It's such a classic, though. Oh, when the live crowds come back. When he comes back to Florida, Adam Cole, baby! That's going to be fun to do again. Um, but yeah, uh, then Billy Kay gets tagged in. And she, she has such a lung set on her. Um, she, she gets kind of tagged a few times by Liv. Liv gets a hot tag. Liv. She has a pretty, she has a good missile dropkick. I know that much. And then it looks like the iconic stole the magic killer. You brought in one of the best tag teams in the Bullet Club, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, to give them, give the iconics, give the iconics the magic killer. And then you dump them back to New Japan. Oh, I feel boo WWE. Um, this match, I don't know. Maybe I wasn't feeling it today. But this match is absolutely nothing. Besides seeing the magic killer and Peyton Rice do, do her booty shake, booty shake, and Billy Kay. It was a ham sandwich of a match. I could have had the same match with him. Just put me in the ring. I work cheaper. And then, hi, Sasha! We were like, I cut it! And we want to fight you next. So that was that. Then, again, it was a big show. Talking to Christian. Uh, Natty... Talks down to live, lives, leaves. Natty, no. Natalia, it's because you sound like Kmart mom. I want to speak to your manager. And Lana shows up. Lana talks to Natalia about her problems. I don't even care. Uh, Christian, as he makes his decision, he is going to face Randy Orton uh, tonight. And then MVP, he sees Apollo Crews in the back. He says, hey, you should join me. It's the only way you're going to keep that title. So we'll see what happens there. And Charlotte and her dad. Woo! Rick Flair! Woo! I'll tell you what, I wish I had Rick Flair's hair. That'd be pretty cool. Um, 
But yeah, I, no one. He, like, like he's trying to ask Charlotte what she wants. Again, yeah, he is Ric Flair. He could, I'm sure he could pull some strings, but uh, Charlotte wants one thing, and that's Andrade. Um, and there was a Paul Cruz taking on Sheldon Benjamin. This was a fun match. This this could have been so much more, but it was so quick. All the matches seemed really quick, and they seem the the wrestling matches in this seem to be the sideshow to all the backstage stuff. Yeah. It should be the other way around. The backstage stuff should highlight the wrestling matches, not the other way around. Well, again, there's no more Paul Heyman, though. Indeed. And then, let's see here. So, it was a, for this match, the Paul Cruz taking on Shelton Benjamin. It was a classic tie-up, and they kind of shove each other, kind of the traditional test of strength, who's stronger. Then they just trade blows, uh, Shelton Benjamin... Uh, Apollo Cruz got Sheldon Benjamin up. He reversed that. He tried to roll up with a dirty pin that the referee clearly saw. And then Apollo Cruz did a roll up with grabbing the rope. The referee did not see it, though. Apollo Cruz wins. If you're going to do that, I, I could do that too. This is another ham sandwich. Then there was more Drew and our truth and our truth talk people into it's only going to be Drew's belt on the line. It's an all or nothing thing, except for it's just all of Drew's championship, not the twenty four seven. Uh, was Lion Oscar recap that debauchery of a match? Oscar did a little interview. Oscar's amazing. Oscar's all the personality. Then there was Big Show with the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. I, I don't even care what they were talking about. And a lot of the show might actually be under half an hour. Bobby Lashley and MVP taking on R Truth and Drew McIntyre. Actually, this was probably one of the better matches of the night. It starts off uh, Drew and Bobby start off. It's a great exchange. Oh, ouch! Those Scottish chop soap, man. S someone in like Finland just got their chest caved in. That's how brutal they are. Oh. Then MVP and Bobby, the Drew McIntyre gets sent in the corner. MVP and Bobby Lashley work him over there. The, Drew has a good-looking spine buster. Uh, hits a neck breaker on MVP. R-Truth tags himself in. And you know when R-Truth gets involved, he gets tossed into, I am the barricade, I am the barricade, I am the barricade, cuckoo ka -choo. Uh, so he so he actually can't get pinned. Um, Drew Drew, Sims, Drew comes to his aid a little bit. Our truth eventually tags out. MVP, however, got nailed by a future shock DDT. Our truth uh, he goes for the pin, broken up by Bobby Lashley. Our truth distracts Bobby Lashley uh, on the outside. Bobby Lashley tried to spear our truth. Our truth dropped, holds him into the steps. He got, Bobby Lashley got suckered. But our truth, uh, MVP hits another Claymore, but then Drew doesn't cover. He's like he tags in. Our truth tells our truth to go up, flings our truth upon a prone MVP. Our our truth gets the pin. More importantly, Drew McIntyre keeps his belt. Our truth and Drew McIntyre win. Drew seemed to be having a fun time. I thought for a second he was going to break character and start dancing with our truth. But that would have been too house show-ish. This match overall, it's a solid cheeseburger match. I was choosing Christian. Ric Flair saying, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this, son. I've been there, done that. Look at me. Uh, Christian says, now I have to go through with this. If not, I'll be a chicken forever. Or, or something to that effect. Then Sasha Banks and Bailey comes out. And I can't believe it's your birthday, Bailey. Once they said, oh, it's Bailey's birthday, I'm like, oh, God. They're not going to have a This Is Your Life Again Bailey segment. That would really be the nail in the coffin for the show. But the Iconics come in. And whoa! 
Peyton Royce. She has the slap from down under. Oh, she cracks Sasha Banks. And they're going to have a match next week for the women's title. That might be interesting. Could be at least. Then there was another recap, Seth Rollins. Dominic, what happened earlier in the night? Then we had a Nia Jax and Oscar rematch. <sighs> Again, not that good, though. And Nia early started to work over Oscar, which makes sense. Nia's going to be the bigger of the two. He can work her over. Now, Oscar tried to hit the arm bar. Nia Jax wasn't having any of that. Tossed her to the outside. And then, oh! Asuka, again, Asuka with a Juju Katami, the proper term for it. But then on the outside, oh, that powerbomb by Nia Jax. Although she probably made sure to do that as safe as utterly possible. Because she stared at it. She stared at that ring post. And listen, the ring post is the second hardest, tr is a true, the second hardest object in the ring. Number one, the steel steps. Number two, the steel ring posts. Number three, the turnbuckle bolts. Again, the, the apron's only like four, I think. And that's just around the ring. Then, Because then you have the ring bell, the hammer, and the table, maybe. Because there's already no padding on tables. Unless they do like a crazy spot, they have a crash pad there. But that's a whole other issue. Uh, that powerbomb on the outside, Nijax eyeballed that ring post for a second probably realized then there was some voice in the back of your head oh this would be a cool spot it's like a little angel here oh the devil here this would be a cool spot the angel on the shoulder you're gonna get fired if you do that she shows to listen to that angel regular power bomb but but she took she held her up and and turned by that post for an uncomfortably short period of time uh, then next time, so, uh, there on the outside goes to commercial break. Next thing you see, we have Asuka stuck in the torture rack. Uh, then she, then Nia Jax tries to set Asuka for a, a super power bomb or superplex. Asuka reverses that. Yeah, super superplex attempt by Asuka. Asuka slides through, can't can't go there. Kicks her in the knee. Nia kind of falls. She forgets to grab both ropes. With both hands, she has one rope, so Asuka decides to running double stomp her right in the chest. Um, however, this was not enough. To... Asuka hit some yes kicks onto Nia Jax. Uh, Nia Jax blocked the last one. Turned that into a... Uh, that Samoan headbutt. Ouch. And then the Samoan drop. But after we count, one, two, three. One, two. Oh, no. Two. Sweet. And Nia Jax does none, none of it. So she shoves said referee. You cannot put your hands on an official. The official did what all officials probably should. It's like, hey, you're going to put your hands on me. Wait, let me go disqualify you. He goes to get go to, to the ring announcer to announce the disqualification. Oscar rolls up Nia Jax. He's like, Pff. one, two, three. But fast counted Nia Jax. Oscar retains her championship. It's better. Hey, she's but welcome back. Um, I don't know. I'm just not a big Nia Jax fan. The last time these two met in NXT, it's kind of useless. I, I'm sorry, Asuka. This was a ham sandwich match. Then uh, Randy Orton speaks to Charlie. Why, Charlie's so tiny. Looks so intimidated. Or Chispa. A little kitty cat sniffing around because I move the chairs around. She has to go rub against stuff that normally I'm leaning against. Because she was falling asleep on my arms when I was trying to type and do work today. That's me because you're fluffy. Poke, boop, 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 boop. Let me boop you some. No. Tail grab. Why'd you grab my tail? Um. Yeah, so that was an that was an uh, it's an interview. It is what it was. I see you. Actually, she knows there's a lizard stuck in the closet somewhere too. You can come up here, oh, silly kitty. 
But then in the next final main event of the evening, it was Chris Christian taking on Randy Orton. Uh, Ric Flair comes out after all of this. Hey, who's this? Who's this? Oh, that's right. Your paws don't stick. And we have a kitty sighting today, folks. See, say, say hi to everyone. Oh, I think you broke the camera too. That's never a good sign. So this will be a weird thing. You just see me and the cat and the, my voice. There it goes. Now it's working. See, look, people are out there. Say hi to everyone. No, don't give them the middle claw. Why do you always do that? Why are you so mean to people? Because of this? Because of this nonsense? You give me the middle claw. So let's see. So we have Christian taking on Rainy Orton. Ric Flair comes out, tries to stop it. And then you think Ric Flair leaves? But no! Ric Flair! Woo! Let's see, Siri, Siri, can you do that? Can you do what Ric Flair does? I got you. Nope, like there. So Ric Flair just went whoop! Yep, right to. Why are you looking at me like that? Oh! Darn. Sure, this gets me. I, I, I never see it though. Yep, but. So he, so he crotched. <laughs> I'm watching the replay on my own video. Wow! Oh, I sell so good. Um, but yeah, so Ric Flair crotched Christian again. It's an unsanctioned match. You can do whatever she wants, and you can see, see her just sitting out there. Um, she, she knows I'm going to take a shower soon. The air is on. She knows it's time for bed. Uh, Randy Orton and then punts. I like the I like the return of the punt. Punts Christian in the head. I'm sorry, man. The way he pins him, he, he just lays on him, puts his arm across his chest, and stares at Christian. Then he starts to stroke Christian's hair. I'm sorry, man. It's you or me. It's gonna be me, man. So it was. It's actually pretty good. Uh, this this Randy Orton, the leg, the legend killer is back. Yes. Um, this match itself told a good story. Ric Flair got involved, but then last long it was two wrestling moves. He could do he could he could do it he could crotch me and, and punt me for for five hundred dollars I take it. It was a ham sandwich. So now you know what this means overall this raw after backlash was not good. If this is what we're gonna get from Bruce Pritchard. You might as well put me in charge of the writing because I could have done the same thing because this was a ham sandwich of a show. And that was it for Raw. Um, rest of the week tomorrow, I'll be up live stream. I'll be here live streaming Impact Wrestling. And Wednesday is going to be AEW recap. Thursday, I'm off. Thursday, I probably have to clean up all the video files. Friday is SmackDown. Then I'm off Saturday and Sunday. Oh, I am off. I am off Saturday and, and Sunday. Oh, I can relax on a Sunday evening at least. That's pretty good. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. If you want to be like BML2. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe, or find me in the chat. Uh, find me in Discord. And I shall see everyone later. And this is going to get done in less than half an hour. Bye.